Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, Codexual, a.k.a. Hatchel, and we're going to be talking about combining all of our modems. Now, it can be uh, your, your hotspots, uh, your hotspots from your phone. It can be your home uh, internet. Uh, just as long as there's an internet connection, this will work. However, I am going to be using these hotspots, for example, because I'm an IRL streamer. In real life streamer, basically meaning I stream to, to Twitch or to Facebook or YouTube, what have you, right? And the reason why I have Sprint slash T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T data plans is because if um, if my AT&T service goes down, then I still have these two hotspots that are still getting good coverage and I will not drop signal. And so that means my video feed to Twitch or whatever is uh, still being broadcast out. People are still seeing what I'm doing. Now, um, the thing that you need is uh, Raspberry Pi and we're gonna do a configuration of how to set it up and whatnot here in the and uh, later on the in the video, um, you do need to purchase Speedify. So I got this on a deal uh, for 50 bucks for three years. Now that was quite the steal. Um, I am ditching the uh, Live View, the Solo uh, Live View. Um, it's, it's a great product and um, they do the same technology that you're able to bond in all these connections into their services. However, it's 45 to 50 bucks a month. So granted, why would I want to pay an extra 50 bucks a month when I just pay 50 bucks for three years? Now that was on a deal. There's different deals on the site right now, so you're just going to always have to look for a good deal for you. Uh, the current deal as of recording this video, Speedify is offering 100 bucks for three years. So it's still a good deal. Um, but um, yeah, anyways, you are able to, uh, uh, with the live view, you're able to, you know, uh, plug it in uh, via USB, Ethernet port, and it even has wireless capability to receive it but it does not have the technology to get all these modems combined and spit out the the combined wi-fi um so meaning that it's able to receive internet but it doesn't want to spit out internet as well this is where the the raspberry pi comes into play now it, it can share all this connection via wi-fi or if you have um a spare USB uh, dongle through Ethernet port, or you can even use the Ethernet port on here, but it's being occupied by this router that's connected to the Sprint slash T-Mobile uh, dongle here. And so it's occupying the internet to receive it, so it's spitting out Wi-Fi from the combining modems. Now it's using a VPN technology, and that's how it's combining all of uh, these um, internet connections. So that's where i'm at and hopefully this made sense um i still can uh, for all those uh, irl streamers out there who use the uh live view solo you still can um connect like via you know your uh, ethernet port to the raspberry pi and still use the speedify services and not pay uh, 45 to 50 bucks a month, but I have not yet tested that out. I've only tested it out from my phone, my uh, secondary phone to live stream, and that's been working out great for me. Um, it's nice and convenient, so I don't have to always carry around um, bigger batteries or all this video equipment in my backpack when I actually start going IRLing. So just this and my phone and a little tripod and it's just easy to carry around. So that's why I am doing it. Um, but nonetheless, uh, let's get on to the video of how to configure this. Uh, just a fair warning, um, as far as this goes, I'm using Ubuntu version 20.04.1 and I'm having a problem of getting a automatic uh, a static IP address, which is not necessarily a big problem because if you use a phone or uh, uh, if you get a, a travel router, you know, you can configure a static IP address to with this and the internet will work just fine. Now, if you were try to connect like uh, uh, the live view, um, 
to the device, it doesn't detect it and you don't have the option to actually configure a static IP address. That is one of the downfalls about this. So um, if you're gonna be using the Live View, invest in a travel router, then you can set up a static IP address via the travel router, and then it will use a DHCP server to assign IP addresses automatically. So um, there's that. I'll be showing you how to do that in the video. Um, as for your travel router, it just you're gonna have to read documentations of how to set it up for yourself. But um, as for set, as for setting up a static IP address, it'll be done through. Um, uh, an Android phone, it'll be done through a Windows 10 machine. Um, you're gonna have to look it up on your iPhone of how to set up a static IP address and um, what other other devices there is. So, um, but yeah, let's go ahead and continue on to the portion of the video of how to configure it to Speedify uh, on towards the Raspberry Pi. You can also check out a video um, down in the link in the description of how to install the Ubuntu on towards the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can use other operating systems on the Raspberry Pi, but I am specifically using Ubuntu uh, 20.04.1 LTS. Check out Restream.io. It allows you to restream towards to multiple platforms all at once from your OBS or XSplit or whatever streaming platform you are using. You can stream towards to Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, etc. Now, why would you do this? You can get that extra exposure because such platforms are really hard to grow on and you can build an audience. Now, if we check over onto the Restream platform, you can see the entire list that will allow you to stream. And then here at the bottom here are the premiums. So you can stream towards your personal profile on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube. You can even double the channels if you have multiple channels. Um, if we go back towards our uh, destinations here, you can toggle which ones you want to stream to all at the same time. And we can just, you know, with a simple of a switch. If we also click on the update titles, we can simultaneously change the channels of the title, description, and if we're playing a game, we can change through the pre-selected listings here, or we can go ahead and just type in uh, whatever game that is not listed and it'll update it on those platforms. So give Restream IO a try here today for free. Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy Codextral, aka Hackshul, and today we're going to be talking about and configuring our own little Speedify here on our Raspberry Pi. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how to set up a Raspberry Pi. Um, just for your information, you know, this is something that you do have to pay for, um, regardless of paying for the Raspberry Pi itself. But to use Speedify, you need to spend money on it. So, what is Speedify? Me, as an IRL streamer, I do rely on having um um having multiple connections such as with a modem with AT&T a modem with Verizon a modem with T-Mobile and modem with a uh, Sprint even though that those two uh, companies are now merged they're still separated towers until they completely you know merge all of this and what Speedify does it allows you to merge all of these devices and it will use their VPN technology and it will merge it from there. So you can have up to, you know, multiple devices, two at the minimum or more, you know. Um, right now that there's this deal going on, so there's like, I paid for like a $50 plan for three years. And when I, uh, uh, okay, maybe they, they changed the plans because a couple of weeks ago I paid 50 bucks for three years. So, you know, but uh, there's still that deal going on for a hundred bucks, whatever. Um, this is not sponsored or nor am I affiliate with them. But um, anywho, when uh, as for an IRL streamer, there's a, a device out there that's called the Live View Solo, which allows you to merge all this technology, and you pay uh, fifty bucks a month for it. So I don't want to pay fifty bucks a month for this other. Um, company, which is a great company, by the way, uh, amazing technology, but why would I pay 50 bucks a month when I can use Speedify to use that same technology? Anyways, let's get on to the video and let's show you how to um, install and configure the Speedify. Now, um, all links will be in the description down below, and I'm using the Ubuntu uh, 20.04.1 version. So, um, Let's go ahead and run as our run sudo tack i. 
and now we are root. So if we type in if config, it will show us all of our um, active networks or our interfaces. So it shows that um, I currently do have Speedify installed. I'm gonna go ahead and just uninstall that and we're gonna reinstall that. Um, I wanna talk about the um, this right here, the WLAN zero, that is your wire or uh, the wireless interface on the Raspberry Pi. Um, LO is just a, uh, uh, your loopback, your eth zero ethernet, and the connectify is the speedify. Um, essentially, I don't have to uninstall it um, just to save some time, but to install it, uh, there's a couple things I want you to install first. So if you type in if config, you know, it's gonna ask you to install net tools. So you wanna type in apt uh, install net dash tools. And now, uh, once you hit enter, um, it'll ask you to install it and you are able to use if config. You can also use IP space A. I just like if config better. Um, let's go ahead and clear that out. So to actually install it, um, if you're running as root, this is the first, first command that you're gonna use. And if you are not running as root, then this is the second or the other command that you're gonna use if you're not root. Um, after you install your Speedify, you want to type this in. Then when it says username and password, right there's gonna be your email and that's gonna be your password. Then after you enter that in, it'll say uh, login status and it will connect you to some uh, VPN that's close to you. Um, after you um, hit, after you type in the connect, then it, it will first say login status then once you connect, it'll connect to the VPN that's closest to you. Now to automatically start, um, so every time that you boot up your Raspberry Pi, which I highly recommend, um, put in this command. So on start, then it'll boot up into the VPN. So um, if you wanna stop it for whatever reason, here are the other commands. And for whatever reason, if you want to, uh, uh, if you wanna uninstall it, you just type in apt, remove, then speedify, then that's basically it. So, um, as for configuring things, um, I want to, uh, if we go ahead and uh, type in if config, it shows the current uh, interfaces. I'm gonna plug in my AT&T hotspot and I'm gonna plug in my Verizon hotspot. So let me uh, go ahead and do that now. So the AT&T one is first, and I want to differentiate the uh, interfaces. So let's go ahead and type that in again. So now you see that ETH1, Ethernet1, has popped up, and it automatically assigned us an IP address of 10.168.1.4. And we want to make sure that, you know, we always have a um, um, an automatic uh, DHCP IP address. Now, this is an extra step. Um, most, in most cases, you don't have to do this, but if your device, such as your hotspot, when you plug it in, if it does not a, uh, if it doesn't get a IP address, then this is what you have to do. Um, read your uh, device's manufacturer's documentation because every device is different, but this is what helped me out when I was having problems. So if we type in uh, CD slash uh, Etsy slash uh, net plan, then um, type in ls, then we'll see that directory where it says 50-cloud.ini.t.yaml. Uh, uh, so it may be a different file name for you and whatever the, whatever that file name is, go ahead and uh, uh, make modifications towards it. So I will leave like an example config um, and paste bin link. And um, right here, since it's, uh, with eth0, this is the ethernet port that's on the Raspberry Pi and DHCP, um, then colon, true. So that means it's gonna be, an, it's going to grab an IP address automatically. Same thing with eth1, it's going to assign or grab the IP address automatically from that modem slash device. And whatever, like, whatever device that you plug in 
Um, for an example, I'm going to plug in my Verizon hotspot and it will say USB zero and we don't have the USB zero in. And uh, let's go ahead and go back to our config or get out of the config and plug in our Verizon hotspot. Okay. Now, once we uh, hit if config, we are able to see, hopefully it booted up. Now let's give it another second. Or not. If it does not want to show, right? And this is where we need to assign it an IP address. Uh, let's see if that device is active, but it's not being assigned a IP address. So we're gonna type in IP address if A, or IP, or excuse me, if config space tack A, then it shows all the interfaces. So now that we see the USB zero, which is my Verizon hotspot, it's not assigned with a INET, meaning it's not signed with an IP address, and I want to assign it with, uh, with an IP address. Rather, it can be a static or an automatic, which we're gonna make it an automatic. So now we're gonna go back towards our config file. So pico, then the name of the file, and make sure that you, um, if you do like extra spaces, uh, or if you tab, it's the, 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 the way that net plan reads config is finicky. So you want to make sure that you don't hit the tab and you don't want to hit all these extra spaces because it has to be spaced correctly, if that makes sense. So what we want to do is, uh, create a new line and right it matches under the e so we're going to type in usb zero colon then hit space until it matches up with the d okay so dhcp4 then space true because it's going to be automatic and space optional true and before uh um, before I save this config, I want to talk about the, the wireless aspect. So if you have like a, uh, if you buy like an external USB wireless adapter and it comes up with a WLAN zero or excuse me, WLAN zero is going to be occupied once we configure it. So w, it'll come up with WLAN one. And now we want to connect that towards a wireless hotspot. Um, so this is going to be the wireless name and that's going to be the password and it's going to be getting that IP address automatically. Again, you can set up a, a static. Um, I'll leave documentations down in the description below. So if you want to set things up statically, you can, um, but it would be most preferable to be uh, um, automatic unless if your hotspot device requires it to be static. Anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and, and hit control O, hit enter, hit control Z. So control O um, saves the file. And now what we want to do is uh, type in a net plan and generate to make sure that we didn't hit any errors. And that's okay. That's everything's complete. So net plan apply. And this may take some time. It shouldn't take too much at all. Um, once it's done, it once we type in if config, it should appear with a uh, with an assigned IP address. Okay, so you might have an error, and if you do, what you can do is uh, type in uh, this command right here to see it for more details. And let's go ahead and peek at what the problem may be. Uh, okay. So since uh, it, it declared that WLAN one device, it's trying to look for that device, which is currently not plugged in. And that's why it popped up with an error. So we're gonna go ahead and ignore that. Um, hit control Z. And if we type in, let's, let's go ahead and clear this out. If we type in if config, we can see that USB zero is now popped up. Oh, look at that. It is now assigned a IP address. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, so now that I have 
uh, you know, all my devices that are plugged in. I mean, I have more devices, but we're going to use my at and my Verizon hotspot, uh, just, just for an example. And I also have my home Ethernet or my home Internet uh, um, right here that's plugged in. So this is my home network. So um, this is this what allows me to SSH in without... Uh, eh, Anyways, it's irrelevant from what I'm about to say. Um, next thing what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, get a speed test going on, and we want to install that. Let me um, get that uh, website up and open for the commands that you need to enter in, and you can see what kind of speeds you're getting. So uh, speed test you want to... Okay, so if you type in uh, speed test Ubuntu, it'll, it should be the first link on Google. And you scroll down and hit the uh, Ubuntu, and these are the commands that you're going to enter in one by one. These gray ones don't matter. Ignore them. And now you're going to be able to install it. So now if we type in speed test, uh, trying to get information from the interface. That's interesting. So that's a, I don't know. I don't know what that error is. But everything is working fine because we're able to see a connection and we're able to get the download. And now here's our upload speed and everything is like merged in. And I can also see on my, uh, my hotspot that data is actually being used. So that indicates to me that we have everything set up correctly. So now you can take this hotspot on the go um, and be able to use it. So the question is, do you want to connect it? You want to have it portrayed a, a wireless connection or do you want to occupy the USB uh, or you want to occupy the Ethernet port uh, to share your connection? So what we want to do is type in CD uh, slash uh, Etsy slash Speedify and hit enter, type in ls, then it'll show the Speedify config. If I uh, scroll over there. Okay, so we wanna type in pico, Speedify, oops, uh, dot config, and we want to make some modifications. So currently I have my WLAN zero, which is the wireless interface that is going to use that uh, device to broadcast out a wireless uh, connection um, to share all the bonded connections that I have towards that Raspberry Pi. So if you want to use your Ethernet, you can. Um, it's going to be eth0 or eth1, whatever your interface may be. And leave the interface IP as is. You can change it if you want to, but I just leave it at the default. Uh, DNS server is fine. Um, you don't have to mess around with this. It says uh, set to one to allow internet connection on the other devices when Speedify is uh, disconnected. Um, just go ahead and ignore that. I never really have any problems. So right here, it will show that you, it's commented out, right? And I'll just uh, comment it out for uh, the sake of the video. What you wanna do is you wanna uncomment it out now. So make sure that your Wi-Fi interface matches your share interface up here. So they do, WLAN zero. This is where you can name your Wi-Fi. So the SSID equals, then name it whatever you want, you know, codes, Wi-Fi, and you can give it a password. Now you can select the Wi-Fi mode. Do you want it to use the old technology 2.4 gigahertz band, or do you want to use the five gigahertz band? If you use the five gigahertz band, I type in five and make sure you use the channel 36 because it tells you to do that right here. Then what country you're in? Well, we are in the U S so we're going to leave it at U S if you're in the UK, then you just type in UK and you're going to hit control. O, hit enter and uh, hit control Z to back out of it, then we need the command to um, apply this configuration. Um, it will be right here. So this article shows you how to set up, uh, how to set it up in Wi-Fi mode, or if you want to use the ethernet mode, but I just showed you that. So this is the command that you want to enter in service 
uh, speedify dash sharing uh, reset. And we're just gonna go ahead and hit enter. Um, we didn't really necessarily made any changes to the config other than renaming the Wi-Fi. But um, once we get on our phone, um, which I'm going to start screen sharing or do a recording on that. There's something that may be appalling towards uh, the configuration here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about because it doesn't really want to assign a gateway IP address. So you're going to have to manually set a static IP address on the device that you're trying to connect it with. With some devices, uh, with some Raspberry Pis that you um, are running the Speedify uh, configuration with it will sign an IP address uh, with a gateway and it will not and if it doesn't then we'll you know show the uh, proper way of how to do that um, on the phone but as for the PC let's say that you um, let's say that you are connected to uh, uh, your Wi-Fi and it says you know no internet connection but you're connected to the network what we want to do is uh, go to our uh, right click on the bottom screen and go to uh, open network and internet settings, then go to change adapter options, then choose your Wi-Fi network card, and uh, right click, then click on properties, then uncheck your IP, uh, uh, IPv6, um, and make sure that you leave the rest all check marked except for these two, and uh, go to IPv4, click on properties, and now we want to manually sign in an IP address. You can use this as an example and it will work just fine. So uh, give it 192.168.145 point anywhere between number uh, two and 20, that should be fine. Um, you can have up to uh, two and 255, but uh, just pick a number. Then as your subnet mask, it's gonna be 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 and as for your gateway, you see, this is where it did not assign a gateway IP address. And if we go back here, and I sent it's occupying WLAN zero, and okay, so here's the IP address, here's the subnet mask, but the broadcast, aka the gateway, it doesn't assign it. And I, for some odd reason, sometimes it does work and sometimes it doesn't work. I guess it depends um, on on what operating system you're running, um, Linux operating system you're running under. Um, but this is the problem that uh, I have encountered. So for me to uh, fix that, we need to make sure that the, we assign our computer or our cell phone with the IP address. So make sure you, uh, on the default gateway, type in uh, 182.168.1. 145.1 and as for your preferred DNS just type in 1.1.1.1 then 1.0.0.1 this is Cloudflare's DNS and I strongly recommend using Cloudflare's you can use Google's DNS which is completely fine uh, which is going to be 8.8.8.8 then 8.8.4.4 and that's Google's DNS if you really want to use their uh, DNS um, now uh, you should be able to connect towards the uh, internet and uh, um, you'll be able to go wherever you want to go. Uh, I'm going to show you here how to set it up here on the uh, Android um, if you have any problems. One thing I want to show before I hop off of desktop is if you are trying to plug in your iPhone and tether from your iPhone, natively uh, Ubuntu does not uh, uh, support it, so you're going to have to install something. So you're going to type in apt uh, install, and uh, I think it's we'll find it uh, right here. USB mux D. This will allow you to. Uh, plug and play your iPhone and it will automatically detect it as an interface, blah, blah, blah. And just go ahead and type in install or type in that command. And now you're able to plug in your iPhone and tether it and you should just be uh, just fine and dandy. Now let me show you how to set up a static IP address here on the cell phone. So now that we are 
on our phone and you see the codes Wi-Fi or whatever your Wi-Fi name may be, um, let's go ahead and uh, touch that and type in our password, which is password, and we want to make sure that we hit the advance, and under DHCP, uh, we want to make sure it's static. So the IP address that it signed us and what you should have left by default was 192.168.145. Then give it whatever number you want want to give it. So uh, I'm just going to give it uh, 14. Then that give the gateway number, it should automatically fill in. But if it doesn't, then it's 192.168.1451. Uh, then leave the network prefix. Um, it will automatically fill in the DNS. Uh, you can leave it as that, or you can give it the Cloudflare one, like I have done in the Windows uh, Windows 10. And you can give it a secondary one, which is Cloudflare stuff. Oops. And hit save, then hit connect then it's going to actually connect to it and now we're connected to the Wi-Fi on our smartphone and that's how you do it. Thank you for sticking around. Please feel free to watch my other videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow my social media. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon or send in a donation of any amount with PayPal. It really helps out with post-production, equipment, food in my belly, and also continue making free content for you guys. Links in the description. Y'all take care and thank you once again.